seven secrets that unlocks your third eye to access the prophetic realm. It will change you. It will empower you. It will position you to fulfill mission with God. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel right now. Like this video, comment, and share to bless somebody. Let's dive in to the word proper. It's important to note that as somebody who has been called into the prophetic faculty of assignment, or you've been called out of the darkness into light through our Savior Jesus Christ, God being a spirit being and wants to interact with you as a spirit. For the word says that God is a spirit and those who are his true worshippers must worship him in truth and in spirit. Interacting with God on a daily basis means that you are prophetic and then advancing from that level to picking messages directly from God and giving to his people or to yourself makes you a prophet. In this case, there is every need that the tool or apparatus required for you to be able to access the prophetic realm is unlocked. One of these tools is your third eye. It has been said severally in several circles outside the Christian circles uh, that the third eye uh, is evil because of how it's been presented. That's absolutely true from whichever way you see it. At the same time, in the Christian fold and among the Pentecostal, the prophetic movement, uh, and in this great reawakening that has got a prophetic tinge, I want you to have the understanding that the third eye has got nothing so far for us from what we call the spiritual eye. Some folks say the third eye is located somewhere here. Well, that's how they take it to be. And for what reason or purpose or who brought them into the concept or understanding of the third eye? The thing is that you are a spirit who've got uh, a soul and you live in a body. This uh, being that can be seen here. Your spirit has got eyes. And because we are in the earth realm, we seem to develop our physical eyes first before the spiritual eye comes into picture at all. So when you start realizing the fact that you are a spirit and that as a spirit, you are supposed to be able to see beyond the physical eyes. There is that need that the eye that the spirit has now be unlocked. These are the eyes that makes you to become superhuman wow. where you have got greater ability with seeing things that the naked eyes cannot see or even accessing secrets or details about things that people cannot appreciate with these their eyes. I hope that foundation been laid is uh, good enough for you to find your grounds so we can move into the secrets that unlocks your third eye and then have you access the prophetic realm so you can prophesy to you. The first thing that unlocks your third eye that you must do is get a call. Everyone who ever came into a personal deal with God had a call. It takes a personal deal with God where you can now interact with God, appreciate God, his presence, and the things that he will show you directly or through his angels for you to be able to see other things as in your prophesying. So get a call. You're in the body of Christ, you've been saved, but you have to uh, figure out what your call is. Is it into leadership? Is it into evangelism? Is it into business, entrepreneurship? What exactly is your use in the body of Christ? You should be able to know that. Is it into the prophetic or into the prophetic office? So you should be able to uh, identify that and then stand by it. Or stand with it. It is there that you're not qualified to have your third eye or your spiritual eye or your eye, the eye of your spirit opened. So it can now begin to see the very things that the Holy Spirit of God sees, the very things that the angels of God sees, so that when your spirit is now seeing things and you are saying them out of your mouth, 
they are the very things that the Holy Spirit is seeing and the very things that the angels of God who have that uh, privilege are also seeing that you are now communicating. So the thing is, get a call from God. The second key that unlocks your third eye is consecration. This talks about self-separation or personal separation. When he said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow after me, it talks about focus, it talks about a single-heartedness, it talks about not being encumbered, a lot of things, so that you are now concentrated. Now, I'm separated from this world, so the world, love of this world doesn't blind my eyes. So I'm consecrated. Consecration here means to hallow, uh, make holy. This okay. will, of course, begin or cause from justification by faith and then you progress or advance into sanctification so your whole target like peter said i made reference to the old testament when he said that be holy as the scripture says even as your heavenly father is holy you get that and jesus talked about or make reference, made reference to uh, be you perfect even as your heavenly father is perfect the state of holiness is a state of perfection you are pushing towards there if this becomes your daily hunger like someone said blessed is the man that walk walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in its season his leave also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This will position you. Consecration here brings you into this class, and it will position you now to prosper in whatever you are doing, including in prophesying, in having your third eye activated, opened, activated, and then to begin to see in the spirit realm. So if you want to have the a third eye unlocked, and then have the prophetic realm unlocked for you, and then you access it consistently, uh, you must love holiness. You must love godliness. You must do it consciousness and with your all. And by the time you do it, you discover that by the day, your vision becomes brighter and brighter as you see. Number three point is praying in the Holy Ghost. There's difference between uh, people praying generally in church. That's why we have churches full of people praying as heavy as they can and they see nothing. From somebody who now prays in the Spirit, to pray in the Spirit is to allow the Spirit of the Lord generate body inside of you. And you allow the Spirit of the Lord to flow freely through your mouth, pouring out this body before the Lord. And you allow yourself to be soaked with the body that the Spirit of the Lord has generated in you and allow your mind to travel through the utterance the prayer points and areas that the spirit of god is tackling or capturing or uh, addressing while using your mouth to pray in the process you become nothing but a biological microphone of the holy spirit or a biological uh container of the holy spirit that way Everything that eventually will be coming through your mouth as what you are seeing in the spirit will definitely will be those that are seen by the eyes of the Holy Spirit first, then your spiritual eyes. And hence, when you communicate the same, your prophecy will be accurate. And then this indicates or corresponds with the fact that your third eye is opened and your prophetic realm or the prophetic realm has been unlocked for you. The fourth secret is mentorship. I I'm hitting head on these. You look at in 2 Kings chapter 2, and then as you look in uh, from verse 1 in the scenario of the prophet Elijah about to be taken away from the prophet Elisha, and uh, they came to Betor, the sons of the prophets that were there told the prophet Elisha that your master is about to be carried away from you today. Let's move away from there to, Je uh, to Jericho. He came to Jericho and 50 of the sons of the prophets, the student prophets that were under the training or school, a prophetic school of, of Elijah, were at Jordan. 50 of them, his own student, Elijah, told the prophet Elijah, 
who happen to be somewhat like a senior student, a more closer a student to their master than they were. And they looked at him and they said, your master is about to be carried away from you today. You get that. How can 50 persons say the same prophecy and be correct? It is because they were mentored by the same man operating under the influence of the same spirit. So because Elijah cannot miss prophecy, the 50 of them could not miss prophecy. So it matters who your mentor is when it comes to the prophet. You must pick somebody who is your mentor and uh, rub uh, on the oil of that mentor of yours. And you see wonders happening as you access the prophetic realm.